What's up guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're gonna discuss a article that Noel wrote called Why I Submit to My Husband. So we wanted to talk about it so we, I can ask her some questions and we can uh, fill in anybody out there that hasn't read the article yet and we can talk about those things now. So let's do it. We know this concept is a biblical concept. We know that Paul tells, uh, you know, wives submit to your husbands. So what made you want to write the article? It's a good question. I think because it's such a controversial topic and I've had a few conversations with a few different women. As I was speaking, I realized that, um, wow, this, there's a lot in there. Like, and a lot of people have the wrong idea of, sub of submission. And so I just kind of thought, I'm like, you know what? Such a representation of the church just like Jesus being the head and just the body of Christ and like how it functions together and how we submit to him because he's our head and because he loves us so much that he laid his life down for us. And so I'm like, man, I would just love to just talk about, you know, and talk about it and just even address like how it can be abused. Like not to cut you off there, but like, that's one of the things that like when people, when people read about an article that says, why do I submit to my husband? But not only that, but just when people think of submission, you, I don't know what it is, but people's minds automatically go to like someone like tied up with a rope and like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you do everything I say. Um, but it's important to remember that Jesus submitted to his father's will. Mm -hmm. So everything that Jesus did was in submission and we never see Jesus in this kind of context where he's just, um, you know, down and low and what. He's actually pleased to submit because he knows there's order to it, but it never means that one is uh, greater than the other. It's just a function, it's just a different roles even inside the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the same goes with marriage, right? Mm -hmm. There's different roles. Yeah, and even what you said about order is really good because it re there really is an order to it. Um, it's very difficult for a wife, and I mentioned this in my article, it's very um, difficult for a wife to submit to her husband if her husband doesn't love her well. Then she's just, you know, it's just gonna always be a stumbling block for her because how do you respect somebody who treats you like dirt? When a husband loves his wife, and builds her up and um, is an honest man and um, he's he's trustworthy. It's just like, it just flows. There's a flow to it. It just happens organically where- Well, even yeah. too, like you said, you say, well, if, if a woman or if a wife respects her husband, it's easy, mm -hmm. right? It's but easier. Easier, right? So it's not to say that if you have a husband that's that you can't respect, God doesn't say, okay, well, that's your license to not submit but it just makes it even easier. So I really think like what you're even saying in the article is like you're, you're trying to show the, the, the way God's designed it. That yeah. if the husband, because the role of the husband is to love his wife like Christ loves the church as he laid his life down for her. So that's a huge calling for a husband, you yeah. know? And the thing is too, is that um, submission does not mean that we're weak. I mean, we're, we're e I'm his equal. Mm -hmm. And so much so that like, you know, you think of a picture of the human body and you think of the head, right? And think about the neck and the spine, just the whole vertebrae that goes all the way down. When your spine is weak, or um, flimsy or all over the place or like, uh, what's it called, uh, scoliosis or yeah, whatever, yeah, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're just kind of like crippled. Right. The man, like right. the body, the head, everything is just kind of crippled and bent over and, and not functioning how it should. I mean, it goes, your spine actually, like if you go to a chiropractor or anything, you, you learn about, there's all nerve endings. Like your spine is so um, intricate and it actually helps your digestive system. It helps, it helps everything. It helps your whole body to function better if you are aligned. 
if your spine is aligned and um, even doing exercises to strengthen your spine and strengthen your back it holds your head up higher gives you better posture so a wife you think about it being like the spine and the neck to her husband if she is an honorable trustworthy woman and she is honoring her husband he's gonna be a, a better man too for it you know yeah. it's gonna make him a stronger better more honorable man and that's usually what but, happens too when you hear like uh, you know a husband and a wife when they've been together for a while you always hear the husband say well she's made me a better man yeah. you know it's just like even even like worldly people say that you know that she's made me a better man because because that's God's design you know it's God's design is that there's a role and a function of a wife in the marriage just as much as there is a husband so Getting more to the particulars, though, because that's what everybody wants to know, right? Everybody mm -hmm. wants to know what, well, what does submission look like then? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, okay, there's roles, there's functions, okay, we get it. But, you know, does, does submission look like me saying to you, everything I say goes? No, because it's communication. And if you're loving me, you're not going to rule over me in a in a way that's just controlling like mm -hmm. and that's the thing too is that's where i was talking about with trust you know i love the proverb 31 woman i love her she's just she's wonderful i, I aspire to be like her but she's busy she's a hard worker her husband she makes her husband proud he you know so much about the proverb 31 woman but it says that her her husband trusts in her she's trustworthy and and so trust is what really stands out to me in a marriage it's like you know if you trust me you're not going to be controlling over me right. because you're going to trust me mm -hmm. and if I trust you I'm going to respect you and honor you mm -hmm. now there's situations where um, husbands are they actually do love their wives but their wives are very um, they could they could be in a situation where their wives are very disrespectful but the husband's still called to love the wife right. you know right. and then there's situations where women are very respectful to their husbands you even think about in like other religions that I won't mention, you know, women are very much, they cover up and they very much respect their husbands and they don't speak, they don't talk and their husbands like could beat them or whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's I think that's not, what people look at as submission. As submission right? They right. think of that and then, but that's not how God's designed it. That's not yeah. the order of things where men are just ruling over their wives and everything that they say goes. I mean, it's more, more or less like you're trusting me to lead you know, yeah. and make the best decisions. But if I'm making an ungodly decision, you know, and I'm not following the Lord, you're gonna be quick, which you have plenty of times, you know, not saying I've made a bunch of ungodly decisions, but if I do make a decision that you question, like, I wonder why you're making, and I'm, maybe I'm not, you know, I'm not trusting God in that moment, or you can sense it that it's just like, I'm doing it in my own strength. Yeah. You're quick to just kind of point out like, is this you or is this God? Because I think we're, like you said, with trust. I think it's, it's, there's so much there because if you trust me, what that means is that you trust that I'm following God. Yeah. You trust that I'm putting my faith in God, I'm walking with him, and that he's giving me an understanding of a situation, how to lead this family. Well, that you fear God. I trust mm -hmm. that you fear God. And the, and the beginning of fear is, or fear is the beginning of wisdom, is what the Proverbs say. And it's so true because when you fear God, then you know nothing can be hidden from him. So I know that I could keep secrets from my husband. I know that my husband could keep secrets from me, but nothing can be hidden from God. So when we both have a fear of God yeah. and we put him first, even our thoughts, when we have a thought that we shouldn't have, we're gonna wanna repent for it, right. you know? And then that helps us fearing God, loving God, honoring him, helps me, us to submit to him, helps me to submit to my husband, helps my husband to submit to God. Right. And then it bleeds into the rest of my family because then my children submit to me because they see I submit to my husband. Right. And it just kind of, it actually is an ongoing effect of respect. It's just respect that flows from us respecting and honoring God, flowing through my husband, through me, and then right into my children. Yeah. So submission is not just a thing, just me being quiet and not having a voice. I very much have a voice in this home and I very much have a voice with my husband and mm -hmm. he respects me and he listens to me a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So I think that we really sharpen each other and we're really yeah. we're really good for each other, you know? And Well, that's um, why I think it's, it's mm -hmm. like interlocking years, right? Mm -hmm. in a bicycle you see it like we're supposed to 
like go together. We're supposed to actually have this kind of mechanism that works because that's how God's designed it. God's designed it to where a man and a woman come together because you know, when God created Adam, he said it's not good that man be alone. So he created Eve out of the out of the rib, out of the the body of Adam because you know, he knew that it wasn't good for him to be alone, but also that they would it would be good in this design that God has made and and that was the design that God had from the beginning of creation yeah. that man and woman would be co um, laborers together. Yes, so to co-heirs. Speak. Co-heirs. Yeah. It says in, in the scriptures that um, you should love her because it says that God turns a deaf ear to a man who does not love his wife properly. Mm-hmm. He literally doesn't hear his prayers. Yeah. So like God's got her back, women, you know, like yeah. God's got her back. He loves us and mm-hmm. he takes care of us. So if our husbands aren't loving us well and we're respecting him and honoring him, God's going to turn a deaf ear to their prayers. But it even says in that because mm-hmm that because we are co-heirs right. of Christ. Yeah. So we are we are equal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So then it comes down to you wrote there about the husband, like what is the husband's role? And it's clear picture, Ephesians 5, you know, Paul says, you, you know, husbands love your wives as Christ loves the church and laid his life down for her. And he also talks about washing and renewing her, like we've been washed with the word, right? Yeah. And being renewed. Um, so there is this service that has to happen in the marriage where the husband, needs to be washing his wife with the word renewing her mind with the word of god so there's the responsibility of the husband so it means laying my life down and i I think what it really means to me physically and spiritually so if somebody walks in my front door and comes in and wants to harm my, my wife my family i'm the one that needs to stand at the door i'm the one that needs to take the bullet i'm the one that needs to be you know the go but you know the in between between the the, the you know the, the protector yeah, yeah. that's physically sense, yeah. but spiritually it's kind of the same yeah, thing too amen. because because when we are getting tested or we're getting tempted or we're I, I see something off in the household we're to be just like um, a shepherd you know we're a shepherd you know he takes care of the sheep he takes care of his flock and he's the one that's you know two steps ahead looking at all the different variables that might be happening just like it would be a shepherd in a church mm-hmm. so this is like a little flock So the husband's role, extremely important, but it's also can be difficult at times too, because you have to love your wife, you know, as Christ loved the church. And it's like, well, Jesus. And come on, sometimes when it's that time of the month, (laughs) we're not that easy to love, but he does a pretty good job of it. I try, but you know, but the point is like, you have to like, you know, you have to lay your life down in that moment. So at that moment where you're feeling like, you know, like, you're not just not in a good mood or you're not happy or whatever. Like I have to sacrifice myself, my own emotions. You know, it's about, you know, we were reading in Philippians two with some brothers this week, it's just about how, you know, what, what humility is, you know, and it's just thinking of others, you know, more than yourself. And I have to do that. Like that's the call of the husband is to like, think of every single other person in my house before I think of myself. Mm-hmm. And that is not easy to do, yeah. you know? it's, it's Especially because a... he was an only child too, yeah, which his well, parents yeah. raised him really well though. <laughs> yeah, but, but still, he, but it's interesting, in Christ though. though yeah, you know? He, he, you know, being an only child too, you think it would be a really big struggle for him, but then in Christ, right. it's like, you're always dying to self. I feel yeah. like he puts himself uh, after all of us in this house, like mm-hmm. after me and my kids, he- But it's he's not always, always easy. Last. He does that. Know. You know, because you want, at times you just, you, it could be the littlest thing too, you know, it's not always like the big decisions, you know, we think of, but just little stuff. Um, The kids want to do this and I'm just like, I'm tired and I want to do that right now. Or she wants to do this and I'm tired and I want to do that. Mm -hmm. So there's those things you just kind of have to continue to die to yourself. So I just look at it as the husband's role and the wife's role can be both very difficult at times, right? It can be both very hard. The, The husband's role can be difficult. The wife's roles can be difficult, but if we're pursuing the same goal god gives the grace he gives us strength to to do this and um we make it more difficult like you said when if i'm harder to respect it makes your job a whole lot harder to to submit and if you are hard to um you know for me to sacrifice myself and but you know i it's harder for me but nevertheless Jesus like we were hard to love yeah right we we 
really, I don't know how he loved this at all. You can see is the husbands have a hard role, the wives have a hard role, right? So if the husband's hard to respect, the wife is not easy to love. I mean, it can be all difficult, but, but God gives the grace, right? So regardless of that, in a marriage, it should be the husband is loving his wife like Christ loves the church, and the wife is submitting to her husband as her head and, and as trusting him to lead, right? And, um, and I think what you see is this beautiful, uh, just fruit. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's just this beautiful relationship the way that God has designed it because ultimately the goal between a wife and a husband doing this is to give an example of Christ and the church. That's it. Like marriage is to give a picture of the church, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes we just think of marriage and we're not thinking of like my relationship with you is to actually proclaim to people the gospel is to proclaim God and give him glory that this is what it looks like with Christ and his church. So I think about in 1 Corinthians how it talks about, you know, the race that mm -hmm. we're in, you know, to to the prize. And so it's like we're in this race together and then, you know, I think about Philippians where it says finally brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Yeah. So we're constantly having a heaven perspective like bringing heaven to earth in our marriage too and so um like i want kenny to go not that i'm competing with him but i want him to even go past me like right. go go and he wants me to go past him so we're just like in this race together with our eyes on the prize you know yeah. and um right. yeah and just bringing heaven down into our marriage and into our home and in our children and you know it's, it's a funny thing because even with this topic it's like i could talk about so many other things that would be so so much more appealing and even when I wrote it I'm like maybe I should just say it like what a godly marriage looks like but I really wanted to kind of have that clickbait and like grab people's attention with submission because it, it's just such a um, controversial thing because people have such a misunderstanding for it but I'm telling you if you honor your husband and husbands if you love your wives it will transform future generations it is no small thing it is a huge thing to yeah. be done it is it's a huge command from God and so um, but it shows how we honor God it shows us how we honor each other and then it's gonna raise our children to honor God and to to love others and to well, make even, disciples. Well, too, like, and if there's an issue with it, the issue is obviously not with us, but the issue is with the scriptures, the issue is with God. Yeah. God's actually commanded it. He's designed it. I think what happens is, is just like how we started off the video when we started this, you said a lot of people just misunderstand it. They don't, they don't clearly understand what it means and they have the wrong perception of it. They have the wrong understanding of it. And then what happens is, is that, well, I don't want to do that. Well, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. But it's just like, if you understand what the Bible is teaching and you understand that this is actual a blessing to your household, because what happens is when you're not doing it and you're not, you know, being obedient, mm -hmm. it's not going to reap blessings. Yeah. Right. It's just not, it's just, it's what's going to happen is it's going to be a lot of friction in a marriage. Mm -hmm. right? There's going to be but a lot gonna of But it's going to bleed problems. into the kids. Like when you see kids yeah. who don't respect authority and they don't, you know, they don't listen well or, you know, and that's, that's any kid. My kids of course can struggle with that too. Um, nah, what? Our kids, nah. <laughs> but seeing their parents live it out yeah you know it it really does um manifest in them as well and they're the future generation and they're what's going to carry the torch mm -hmm. after us so and yep. there are arrows we're shooting them out into the world one day to go and make disciples and to be disciples themselves mm -hmm. of jesus so they need to see this practically now while they're little so it's so ingrained in them yeah respect and then um trust you trust know, respect, is huge. trust yeah um, communication trust mm -hmm. and then just understanding each other. what it means and also what it doesn't mean <laughs> and so many times um you know we want to get the gospel out we want to make disciples and um if you're not honoring your husband you're not submitting to your husband then just kind of shows and i mean this in a way of I'm not talking about if you're in an abusive relationship or your kids are being abused. I'm not, if anybody's life is in jeopardy, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in the normal trials in a marriage or in a normal marriage. Uh, if you just are not going to submit to your husband and you're going to be a feminist or whatever, you know, with that, um, you're 
really going to do the gospel a disservice, yeah. you know? And so well, people, when they see that your home is in order and your children are set apart and you and your husband are set apart and that you guys like each other, not only love each other, but you just like each other, mm -hmm. it is like a magnet. It draws people in and so much of our life and, um, and making disciples is modeling your life. You know, like it's it's showing yeah, it really to is. others yeah. how to how to live a godly life, you know, and that's not to say we're perfect. Cause I don't always submit to Kenny perfectly. He doesn't always love me perfectly. Um, but it's just saying, you know, the overall yeah. encompassing like it's like what you're saying. always like the, the goal, mm -hmm. you know, is yes, it's the marriage is to represent Christ in the church. Mm -hmm. So the overall goal is the gospel. Right, so that's what's beautiful about you know when you're when you're a believer when you're a disciple of Christ, that there's actual purpose to a marriage. Mm -hmm. There's actually a purpose to us being married in God's eyes. Where if you're not in Christ, like you just you receive the benefits of being married because God's common grace. But when you're in Christ's family, now you receive like this amazing reality that, wow, there's actual purpose between us being married, which isn't just to have kids. It just isn't to enjoy each other. It just isn't to have, you know, that connection and that, you know, that it's not good for me to be alone, like what he said to Adam, but there's actually like this, like grand plan that gives God the glory and ultimately mm -hmm. everybody gets to um, see that. Yeah. And uh, it's, so it's like this visible uh, representation of the gospel. So, yeah, it is. It's a visible yeah. representation of that. Yeah, it's good. I just hope and I pray for people out there that are trying to understand this concept. And even if you're, I would really, honestly, I would say that if you're watching this video, um, just and you're by yourself and you're a, a wife or a husband, you're by yourself, just pause it and watch it with your wife and your and or your your spouse you know watch it with them yeah. uh together because hopefully you know maybe you can end this and say all right do we agree with that or we not agree with that but go to the scriptures you know we're always going to point you to the scriptures i mean our word's not you know infallible it's god's word our word is fallible mm -hmm. so don't always trust everything we say go to your word go to the bible and read it yourself but I just say that. So if you're like a husband and a wife and you're you're like, you know, I really need my husband to hear this or I need my wife to hear this, be like, well, don't don't go for those purposes either, you know, it's just If you're doing it together, then yeah. you both will be blessed by it. Yeah. But if it's always like, well, she doesn't submit to me, well, he doesn't love me. It's yeah. like, okay, then you both need to listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> or we you all both need to read the scriptures. Yeah, on and you that. and you yeah. can be on that course where like, yeah, we think we're doing it. You know, we think that we're we we have, we agree with this. We agree with this thing that Paul says and submission and you know all that stuff. And maybe there's just certain things that you got to work out in your marriage where it's like, well, I guess I'm really not loving my wife the way I should, the way Christ would, and and wives. Maybe I'm not submitting. You know, maybe I'm thinking that everything I say goes and I'm always, you know, making all the decisions and, and he's, you know, that's, that's not good either. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, because then that's just abusing your authority, right? you know, like if you're, if you're a husband and you're just like, well, I said no, or you don't even listen to what her heart or you don't care about mm -hmm. what's manifesting or stirring inside of her. And you just are like, well, I call all the shots. You're not loving her. You're not yeah. doing a good job of loving her, you know? But if you're like, okay, well, I care about what she cares about. And um, yeah, and so then you well, work together well. I was just thinking about the verse, you know, in Genesis 3, because of sin, this is what it's done. Um, the, he says to the woman, he said, I will surely multiply you in childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. So. It's interesting, right? Like the result of sin causes the woman to always want to kind of rule over the husband. Like that's what sin, like sin is gonna do that. Um, and and the, the husband is gonna be just like Adam where he, where it was Eve that was tempting him to sin and he's just kind of giving into it, you know? And that's, that's the problem, 
you know, the, the, that when sin starts to come into the marriage, the wife all of a sudden wants to control the husband and then the husband winds up submitting to the wife and it's just completely out of order. It needs to be flipped. So when we see those situations happening, it's like, okay, well, we're not obeying Christ here. How, how, what's going on? Because that's when, you know, sin is coming in and trying to change things up. It's, the way, it's you know. funny how God made it too because God designed men to flourish, need respect, yeah. and they need that. Well, it's just something I think in us that we desire that. But that's you know? where your like morale comes. Uh -huh. Like that's what gives them morale. Yeah. Like that is like they need to be honored. Like if they're disrespected, yeah. they're yeah. just not. They're not going to do well. They're going to be downcast. Mm -hmm. And if women are not loved, they're going to look for it elsewhere, yeah. or they're going to be insecure, or they're sure. going to. Uh, be downcast as well. We are designed, we need to be loved. They need honor and respect. And it's just yeah. the way God designed it. Right. You know, I agree. it's natural. 100%. It's so true. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just see it, how it takes place in, in life. And so, um, so anyway, no, that's a good point. That's all we got yeah. for that. All right. That's it. All right. We'll see you guys till next time. Grace and peace. Bye.